The Yes campaign is out there every day accusing the No campaign of lying. But the Yes campaign is built on a pack of lies. One lie is that Indigenous people don't cur currently have a voice. That Indigenous people aren't listened to in making laws and policies. It's the opposite. Indigenous Australians have many voices. Hundreds of Indigenous organisations are immersed in policy making affecting Indigenous Australians. Corporations, sporting codes, religious groups, unions, every arm of local, state, territory and federal governments, every agency and bureaucracy have Indigenous advisory bodies or other formal consultations. Nothing happens on Aboriginal land without consultation with traditional owners through native title and land rights legislation. There are more Indigenous par parliamentarians today than ever before, including the Minister for Indigenous Australians. And there's no door in Canberra that isn't wide open for Indigenous Australians who want their voice heard. Another lie is that the voice will give good advice. Indigenous bodies can give bad advice, like the Coalition of the Peaks who advocated against the cashless debit cards. They didn't have all the answers. Another lie is that the voice is just an advisory committee. It's not. It is an entrenched, permanent, political right to make representations to the parliament and the executive. Distinguished professors of constitutional law told the parliamentary committee the voice will have, quote, unquote, similar constitutional status as the parliament, the executive and the high court. But unlike these institutions, institutions, no one knows what the voice is. When the Constitution was written, we had hundreds of years of precedence under the Westminster system. So we knew what a High Court is, what a Parliament is, and what the Executive is. We have no idea what a voice is. Another lie is that 80% of Indigenous people want the voice and it comes out of a grassroots indigenous movement. Even ABC fact check said that the claim doesn't stack up. Many Aboriginals have never heard of the voice, especially those in remote and regional Australia who are most in need. Many Aboriginals are voting no. The regional dialogues leading up to the Uluru Statement were attended by a small number of Indigenous people handpicked to quote unquote ensure consensus. Professor Megan Davis let the cat out of the bag when she said the dialogues did quote unquote rubber stamp the voice. Another lie is that the voice will change Indigenous lives for the better. Read the official Yes pamphlet. The voice sounds like some magical wand that will solve all the problems if only we would just let it. Prime Minister Albanese has said, if you vote no, you'll get more of the same. Actually, if you vote yes, you'll get more of the same. But it will be in the Constitution it will be in the Constitution. Al Albanese says the current approach has failed. The voice will take the current approach, wrap it in more bureaucracy and entrench it in the Constitution forever. If the purpose of the voice is to end disadvantage, it shouldn't be in the Constitution because that's permanent. That says Indigenous Australians will always live in poverty that will always need help, 
that we are destined for permanent disadvantage. That's exactly what people thought in the 1800s when they set up the protection regimes, when they set up segregation. The fact is, most Indigenous Australians are doing fine. They go to school, go to work, run businesses and take care of their families and they aren't in prison. They don't need a special Indigenous voice. It's wrong to tell young people growing up in, in these families that they are disadvantaged because they are Indigenous. It's wrong to tell them, as I have heard many times during this campaign, that they are more likely to go to prison than to university because it's just not true. Where we need to focus is on the, those Aboriginals, those Indigenous Australians who are struggling. Most of them are living in remote communities or are trapped in intergenerational welfare dependency or both. The voice will not help them. The biggest lie of all is that the No campaign people like Senator Price and Senator Little and myself have no plan or even don't want to improve Indigenous opportunities. I don't believe anyone in this country wants to see any Indigenous Australians continue to struggle. Certainly not us. We have devoted most of our adult lives to advocating for and, and supporting Indigenous people in need. We have battle opposition, disinterest and vested interests. We will continue to battle. 